This is a game changer. So I was hoping, as a few of you probably were as well, that this would be part three of making a Verge hairspring from scratch. But instead we're going to be making a tool. I was disappointed in the, the difficulty of getting a really nice consistent curl without things getting tangled up with this, with the single pointer. I mean, yes, it works, and the spring I made in the past I've got in a watch and, and that works, but it's still an awful lot of work. So I had a shot at making a tool with two wires close to each other set in a nice large handle with the end flush. In fact this is the handle I was making in my other short video. But the control again uh, for getting you know, really specific curling action happening, whether it's to decrease or increase, was still vague and not, not what I wanted. So going back to Blakey's book from the 1700s on making your, watch spring, uh, your hair springs from scratch, he's got a little pair of pliers. Now, as I said in the past, I don't have a pair of pliers like this. And yeah, it, it's a, it would be a fair bit of work buying an established pair of pliers and trimming them down or smoothing and grinding etc etc. So I decided to try a pair of brass tweezers that I made a couple of years ago and nipping with the ends of, of the tweezers and drawing through actually gave some promising results. This was despite me not checking the edges of the, uh, the jaws which were a bit, bit sharp and that they taper and they're not designed for curling hairsprings, they were designed for picking things up. But that gave me encouragement to try and bring an amalgam of the pliers that Blakey uses and the tweezers that I can make fairly easily at home. This is going to be sort of a narrated photo essay I'm afraid because moving the camera around to get all the operations was going to be a big task and I just wanted to get these tweezers done. But the end results are very, very promising. So for the project I used both quarter and half inch wide by 0 0.064 brass strip and chose the length of my original brass tweezers, 10 centimeters, as that was a comfortable size to use. Cutting off the first piece and then using the wooden clamp as a handy backstop when scribing off the second piece. I've marked out one side of the jaws, and by placing the brass and ruler like this on their edge, I can get a perfectly square line for marking out the end of the curve on the other side of the jaw. And stacking the two pieces of brass, tightly tape them together, making sure that the edges are lined up. Then it's taking out the piercing saw and carefully cutting down next to the layout lines. This took a while as I was now dealing with quite a thick amount of brass. The final shaping was done with a selection of flat and round files of varying cuts. Before the tape was taken off, a couple of holes were drilled down in the end of the handle. I then used a clockmaker's brooch to get the holes ready for a couple of tapered brass pins. The part of the handle that will take the most flexing I hammered with a cross pin hammer in order to harden up the brass and make it springier. The same area was then smoothly reduced down to about half its thickness using a half round file. I then cut and soldered in place two lengths of quarter inch brass to strengthen the jaws. It is important to note that these strips of brass are guillotined, which means the underside of each strip is a little bit bowed. So any parts you wish to solder must be placed firmly on a flat file and drawn backwards and forwards until a perfectly flat surface has been achieved. If you're having a bit of trouble making the solder flow beautifully, then a little dab of baker's fluid does wonders. Nothing important here, it was just interesting that while I was doing a bit more filing on the ends of the jaws, the vibrations through the paper set up an interesting pattern in the brass shavings. I believe the phenomena is known as cymatics. 
one jaw filed to shape, and both shaped and sanded clean. Fine tuning of the jaws was done by assembling the handle with the taper pins and clamping the jaws together in a vise and finishing them there. The double thickness of brass on the jaws had me a little concerned. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get the tightness of curl required in the centre of a hairspring, so I filed down the added layer to about half its original thickness. When you're endeavouring to accurately file something flat, aside from the constant fitting and refitting of the relevant parts to each other, regularly change the direction you're filing the surface. Having an angled light on the surface while you're doing this will immediately show up where you're filing. So here you can see I've just finished filing lengthwise along the jaw and have switched to going crosswise. Being tapered pins and tapered holes, it only required a light countersinking at the smaller end. The pins were then riveted over with a small domed punch. Filing and sanding brought the end of the handle and the rivets down to a nice smooth finish. After the edges of the jaws were very slightly rounded and the surfaces given a fine sanded finish, I wiped some metal polishing cream on both sides of a double layer of flannelette. Then closing the jaws of the tweezers over the cloth and whizzing backwards and forwards and pushing upwards and downwards as you go, gave a really good finish. So here are the finished curling tweezers. It's important to manipulate the bends in the handle here so that the jaws will come together basically parallel just as they close there. Interestingly, I've got a very slight hollow in the top jaw, a very, very tiny hollow. For the time being, I'm leaving that uh, for the simple reason that I think it will help keep the hairspring metal in place and stop it from wanting to wander up and down if I'm not exactly precise. Also, I'm probably going to reduce a little bit more metal here and here just to extend this thin section out to give the tweezers a lighter touch. You don't want to have to be pressing too hard to close the tweezers, otherwise you won't be able to feel the, uh, the fine tuning of the pressure that you need when you're, when you're doing the actual, uh, the actual curling. So as I said at the, right at the beginning, the results are really, really promising. This is my testing at one end of the hairspring, and yeah, this is without any post-curling manipulation. So the next video, which will be coming up sometime soon, I hope, will be me demonstrating the use of these tweezers, and I'm really looking forward to it. Cheers.